Hello gamers, Yoshi here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the PvP exotic tier list for Destiny 2. And the last video I created, which was also streamed on Twitch, just like this video, I talked about the exotic tier list for weapons uh, in PvE, but now I will be talking about how these weapons perform in PvP. So a lot of the weapons you saw that I gave F tier for PvP, or for PvE, excuse me, you'll see them get much higher tier ratings here for um, PvP. So first up, we're going to talk about bows, because that's what we got for first here. So Leviathan's Breath, in terms as using it as a heavy, I'd say it's probably a C tier in this instance, mostly because... You can one-shot uh, kill people out of their supers. The only drawbacks to this is that you could be using like Black Talon instead, which is a slightly more effective heavy. You could also be using Work of Coil, which is, also, is a lot more effective than using a bow. It's also got a very slow draw time. Um, honestly, probably not C. It's really more like D since I feel like there's a lot of C-class weapons that would outclass um, Leviathan's Breath, but it's not completely useless because you can one-shot people out of their supers with it. However, its slow draw time is really holding it back from being a top performer in PvP. Next, we have Wish Ender. Wish Ender at full drawn gives you wall hacks. Um, it's not you know actual wall hacks but it gives you true sight so you can see enemies through walls um, however the bow doesn't one shot itself it requires two shots so you could shoot off of the bow to have wall hacks and then swap to like a hand cannon or something to get the finisher kill or you could be walking with a teammate you both target the same guy and you both get the hit on that guy for like an insta kill however Bows in PvP, especially bows that can't give themselves damage buffs in order to secure like a one-shot kill, not, not exactly good. And especially, even though it has true sight going for it where it can see through walls and see players through walls, I really don't think true sight, just true sight in itself is enough to use this weapon over something like Ace. I think it's just like a... It's really just like an okay exotic. It's not, you know, worse than using something like this where it has extremely low draw time and it's in your heavy slot so you don't really get to use it often. But it's not something I would use over, I don't know, Ace of Spades or something like Sturm or Vigwing um, or any, any of those a type of weapons. Next up we have is... We have Le Monarch. Le Monarch, I give it a B tier, mostly because the when you proc its perk and you get the poison um, to hit targets in the head, when you get the crit and it does the lasting poison, that poison is incredibly annoying to deal with. It just lasts so long and it makes it really hard to re-peek back out into a fight if you've been affected by Le Monarch's poison um it's probably something you would see controller users using more i wouldn't say it's highly effective on mouse and keyboard however it is annoying enough where i can justify giving it a b tier um currently um however as i tier things light uh, um tier things in this video this may move down to a c it's more like a C plus or a B minus um, type of bow exotic for PvP. Um, and the last two bow exotics we have are Tikus, which is deservedly more a B. So I'm going to give Le Monarch a C. Tikus is deservedly more of a B than Le Monarch, mostly because of its kill potential. Where Le Monarch where it's you get the poison and they're low and then if you get 
you can switch to a hand cannon or something, something like that to get the cleanup. But with Tikus, if you just draw the bow and you do that slight burn damage, a lot of people aren't going to realize that, oh, you know, Tikus is going to one-shot me if I re-peak, even though I have full health. People don't realize that the burn that they received is actually the activation for Tikus um, to kill you. So, whereas the Monarch gets you low and the poison is annoying, people recognize that they're low health, they stay in cover and try to get their health back. With Tikus, people don't instantly recognize that, hey, the burning effect is what triggers Tikus' explosion on its next uh, full draw, um, ADS draw, that is, from Tikus. A lot of people aren't going to expect, you know, when they get exploded by Tikus, so... If, you, if you're playing against people who don't understand how Tikus work, this is a very good bow to be using in PvP, especially um, if you're just looking to like annoy the piss out of people, pretty much. Next up, we have Trinity. And Trinity... I'm going to have to give it D tier. Mostly off of the fact that you have to get an arc kill to proc... And I'm saying this is with Catalyst, and this with Catalyst, and this with Catalyst. But with Catalyst, if you get an arc kill, like an arc nade kill, then you can make use of Trinity. However, good luck getting a bow kill with Trinity on, you know, most people. Like, I wouldn't use Trinity in comp at all. I would use the Monarch over it. I would use Tikus over it. Um... It might be effective in sixes if you can get a lightning, uh, if you can proc lightning rod off of a bow kill or off of an arc kill, and then you can start really chaining Trinity Ghoul um, bow kills together. However, the fact that with how 120s are in this current meta and how high impact uh, pulse rifles are and how snipers work and how shotguns work, um, a bow like this really isn't your best friend unless you know what you're doing. So that wraps up the bows. Next up, we're gonna be talking about scout rifles. And the first scout rifle is Mita Multi-Tool, which I'm actually gonna give, um, maybe a little inflated, but I am gonna give it the A tier. The one thing that makes this gun stand out above other scouts in its kinetic position and other exotics in its kinetic position is that one you get the radar two it's got a hundred aim assist so like the bullets be curving towards people's heads and three is that unlike 150 scout rifles where people get two tap they recognize oh i'm low i'm gonna hide they regen their health with midas when you get the two tap people don't people see that they have a lot of health still. And a lot of people, at least in quick play, are more likely to peek back out after getting two tapped by the Mida. When they peek back out and they're still low health, you do another two tap from the Mida and you get that kill. Um, uh, when Season of the Undying was out and Randy's throwing knife with the ritual scout everyone was trying to get and everyone was trying to get scout rifle kills, Mida was the gun i was using i did not like using jade because the issue that jade suffers from is that you t bop people twice in the head they go high because they're really low health they have no shields and then once they've healed all the way they come back and they try to fight again um that's not something you want especially with a low rpm scout rifle and moving into the next scout jade rabbit i'm gonna have to give it a d tier um it does not excel in this current meta especially with how the maps are in this meta and the other thing is in order to take advantage of jade rabbit's perk is you have to get body shots doing body shots makes your next headshot do increased damage but the thing is in destiny 2 pvp at, at least i mean from how i play the game is like you're always going to be looking to hit crit shots on your target you're always going to be hitting headshots you're never going to want to condition yourself to be aiming for the body um, in PvP, so D tier for me for Jade Rabbit. Uh, next scout we have is Skyburner's Oath. Gonna have to give it the F tier. 
Um, I know I rated it pretty poorly in the PvE tier list. However, even in the PvP tier list, it really has nothing beneficial going for it. Yes, the slugs track towards people, but it is so slow firing that there are so many other guns that outclass this. Like Mida will outclass it with Mida's perks over Skyburners. And the thing is, this consumes your energy slot, and it's just like, why take up your energy slot when Fell Winter's Lie is a big thing right now, or a bottom dollar could take the place of your energy slot, or something like, I don't know, Fighting Lion could take that slot. It's just like, this is not a good primary exotic to be using in PvP. It's just, it has nothing go, uh, nothing to offer you. Next up, we have Symmetry, and Symmetry actually used it tonight um, when I was playing with Valiant, a member of the clan I'm in. Gonna have to give it F tier. My goodness, is it just absolutely abysmal. 47 crit to the head. Um, yeah, you can kill low resilience guardians, I believe, um, in four crit shots. However, most of the time it's trying to hit five crit shots. However, it's not like Mida, where it's got like 100 aim assists and all that fun stuff going for it. It just, it doesn't pack a punch that you need to kill Guardians reliably. It just feels really inconsistent. And then the revolution thing is just so bad with how the movement is. People just are able to get away from the revolution stacks. And you need to have like seven stacks to even just two-shot someone in the first place. And, not, and people in this meta... With the hand cannon um, 120 meta where it's like peak firing and stuff like that. People aren't going to be standing, you know, in a position long enough for you to beam them five crits in the head with symmetry for you to be able to kill them. It's just, it's not happening with this gun. Next scout rifle is... It's on a lot left here. Just want to make sure I don't miss any. Next scout rifle we have is Dead Man's Tail, and I'm gonna have to give Dead Man's Tail S tier. And also, reason being is you're gonna you may already be seeing this weapon like a shit ton in uh in PvP currently. Dead Man's Tail is just absolutely cancer right now. I say it's cancer because I just hate playing against it. I just feel like the meta currently is very stale as of this current patch in season thirteen. However, I'm not going to deny that Dead Man's Tail is an incredibly good weapon, especially with its catalyst um, increasing its fire rate and giving you 100% uh, accuracy while hip firing the weapon. It is very lethal. It's got a long, longer range than pulse, pulse rifles, longer range than the 120s, and it pretty much three taps. Um, it, I know Jade Rabbit can three tap, but Jade Rabbit just... It doesn't have what DMT has got. And and what DMT, Dead Man's Tail, has, it can do what Jade Rabbit does better. Um, especially since you can roll random rolls with Dead Man's Tail, like Outlaw or Killing Wind or Vorpool for shutting down enemy supers. So Dead Man's Tail, S tier. And I believe the last scout rifle here is Polaris Lance. And Polaris, um, I have played with it recently. I I think it's kind of just like middle of the pack, really. Again, there's not a lot of maps where scout rifles really benefit um, currently as a season 13. They're just in a weird place where pulses just do the job better because the pul pulse rifles shoot faster. Polaris, well, yes, on long range maps, it can be very good, especially if you're proccing the perfect fifth or whatever it's called um, to make the um, elemental explosions. Yes, it can be very good. However, it's not, it's just not good. Um, it's slightly better than Jade because you can, you benefit more from its perks because its perk requires you to hit crits, whereas Jade wants you to hit body shots. Why are you hitting body shots? Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not, but it's not a B tier because 
I'm not using this a lot and I don't see other people using it a lot. It's not very good in this meta as well. And as for scout rifles for PvP, I believe that's it. Alright, moving on. Everyone's favorite, hand cannons. First up we have Lumina. Lumina is probably C tier for me. I really don't like Lumina sights on the base model. With the ornament, I do like using this gun a bit more when it has the ornament on it. Uh, I have the ornament. I've used it. I've gotten 500 kills with this thing. It pairs really, um, really well with 72 RPM sniper rifles, high impact frame, because when you have the um, perk, the noble rounds, after you get a kill and you heal slash buff a teammate, it buffs you, so you get like a 30% damage boost, which allows you to one-shot body shot people with high impact frame sniper rifles. And you can give this damage buff to an ally who can also benefit from this damage buff if they're using um, like maybe a kinetic slug or something. They could just body shot with a slug and it would one shot them. So it has good utility. However, the utility it brings isn't something that's going to benefit you in modes like 3v3, trials. Um, it's more so for quick play and for Iron Banner. However, I wouldn't take something like this over a Sturm or over an Ace because one of the limiting factors of Lumina is definitely its range. I believe it has like 45 range as its um, stat. Ace has like 79. Sturm with Catalyst has like 92. So yeah, it's just limited by things like that and just its place in this meta. It just, it, it's not very good with what it has to compete with. Next up, we have Sturm, and Sturm definitely going to give it S tier, especially if you have the Catalyst for Sturm. If you have the Catalyst for Sturm, it buffs its range to like 90, 92-ish, and it buffs its handling up to like 60 or 70 or something like that. It just makes Sturm an extremely reliable 120, even though you can't, there's no Rampage on Sturm, so you can't get it so you can 2-tap. It's an extremely reliable 3-tap 120 exotic hand cannon s tier next up is a little it's a little finicky um how i would determine this i since i am a mouse and keyboard user i am gonna have to give it d tier if you're on console this thing is definitely a s or s tier um but on pc where we don't have the reticle stickiness it's a little bit harder to use this weapon especially if you don't if you're not used to hip firing weapons and um, controlling how this weapon works as a hip fire, it is extremely deadly. I'm not going to deny if you have good aim and you have good gun skill, this weapon is extremely deadly hip fire and up close. However, one is that you have to be extremely good at hip firing, and two is the other thing, this weapon in an era of 120s currently and even with the nerfs 120s are going to receive with us moving into season 14 i really don't see last word ever competing unless you're on console and using a controller where you can benefit from the reticle stickiness uh, next up in the hand cannon department we have thorn and thorn right now i'm going to give it a c tier as well thorn has really dropped off of with usage ever since 120s have come around and since it's been nerfed it's no longer a 150 like lumina lumina was also 150 now they're both 140s because 150s no longer exist they've all been converted into 140 um adaptive frame rpm hand cannons so now that thorn's been nerfed it's still good especially when you proc the soul devourer and you pick up the souls and then you you crit for more and you also do your burn ticks for seven damage instead of i think it's like one or two damage when it doesn't have the soul devourer thing propped however likewise with lumina it really suffers from its range stat being very low and it just while the burn is good and annoying it's just it's 120s right now are so much safer and so much easier to use than this thing Yes, if you're a warlock, you can benefit 
using necrotic grip so you get that nice little poison slash damage but it's just you have to invest so much into thorn where it's just not that great now right now you're so much better off using like steady hand which is a legendary uh, kinetic hand cannon 120 or sturm or ace even because ace has tons of more range than thorn and it has more perks working in its favor than thorn does uh, next up in the hand cannon department, we have Sunshot. Sunshot, I'm going to have to give it D tier. Um, I know it is technically the only 150 hand cannon in this game currently. Um, Thorn and Lumina both nerfed, but Sunshot retained its 150 RPM um, frame, if you will. However, it doesn't give you the light what I believe it doesn't give you the lightweight buff. Um where you have increased movement speed when you have this weapon out. It it just doesn't feel good, um, I guess is the way I would describe it. It's not as bad as using Skyburner's Oath or Symmetry. However, it just doesn't feel like you can hit crits reliably with this gun. If you are hitting your shots with this gun, it does flinch the fuck out of people. Like It flinches them really hard because it technically has like explosive payload on it. It just... The explosive payload style that it gets, it just it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like my shots are connecting. It just feels kind of off. And with the other exotics and the other legendaries you could have in the energy slot, Sunshot really isn't a top pick for me. Next, we have Crimson. Crimson, i probably place around B or A tier um probably a tier for me mostly because i've used it a lot in the past um even before the hand cannon range buffs and damage buffs and all that and i've used it recently it's just it's a pulse rifle but it's a hand cannon but if you get kill headshot precision kills which you're going to be doing anyways it refreshes your health you get your health back and also refreshes the magazine it's just a very reliable weapon. However, you're not going to see a lot of use of it because of how dominant 120s are. But if 120s fall off, you might see more people using Crimson again. Maybe. I don't know. I just think it's a very strong gun just because of its health regen. I probably wouldn't be using this in Trials. Or definitely won't be using it in Trials. Maybe you could use it in Comp. Definitely on um, controller, use Crimson. I heard Crimson's pretty good because of how its stability is and just how, you know, reticle stickiness works on controller. It's a pretty good gun down um, on that platform on console. However, for PC, maybe B tier, but I'm going to give it like an A minus. I just think it's, it's just a reliable gun. However, you're not going to see a lot of it because of the state of crucible right now with 120s and shotguns and yeah fell winters and steady hand or true prophecy or whatever uh next for the hand cannons we have ace ace gonna have to still give it s tier i know that's a it's a little biased giving it s tier um instead of a tier probably gonna drop crimson here down to b tier i'll keep ace s tier mostly because even with how dominant 120s are, Ace just, it hits hard and it shoots fast. Especially if you have Memento Mori proc'd. You get a Memento Mori up. Um, you have six shots. Each of those crits will do 90 damage. 90 damage on a 140, you've got 20 RPM over a 120 R um, RPM hand, hand cannon. So you can do two crits on a body and get a kill. Reload. Get your Memento Mori proc back up. You have the Firefly that it has, so which is like Dragonfly, except it's the only kinetic that has it. Then you have the Enhanced Radar. Radar always up. You have Outlaw when you get a headshot, kill, and reload. It reloads super fast. And you have the Memento Mori, which is like Kill Clip. That is, if you swap off of Ace, you'll lose the perk and its benefits. But And this gun just sounds looks and feels good a definite s tier even with 120s being so rampant um in this current season 13 meta i'd still say ace is an s tier hand cannon 
exotic hand cannon, that is. Uh, next, we have Malfeasance. Malfeasance, probably going to give it D tier. Just with how 180s are in the current meta, it's not completely useless like Skyburners or um, Symmetry. It, ha it got the mag buff with all 180s. It has 20 in the mag. If you hit five shots with Malfeasance, it does that big taken explosion, will, which will kill targets that you've hit no matter how far away they are. So technically, Malfeasance has infinite range. But the issue, my issue with Malfeasance is it requires four crits to get a kill. And with a gun like Ace that exists, or Thorn even, where Thorn can kill in three crits, whereas Malfeasance can kill in four crits, I don't think you really want a four critting hand cannon when you could just use Mida, which has better aim assist and you get your radar up all the time. And it's... It just can cover what malfeasance can cover. It's just, I don't know. Maybe up close, it's a little bit better, especially with hip firing. I do like hip firing this gun um, when I use it. However, it's just, in order to really benefit from using malfeasance, you need to have other people on your team using malfeasance. Um, but that's the only reason, that's the only way I could see this gun rising higher in the ranks. Uh, so for me, D tier. Next. And I believe which is the last, oh, no, second to the last hand cannon we've got is Hawkmoon. Hawkmoon, A tier. Not S tier from me, just because of how the Paracausal shots work. Yes, if you have the Catalyst, the more stacks of Paracausal you have, the better handling and functioning of your Hawkmoon is. Um, if you have like rangefinder on your hawk moon and full bore and like polymer grip or whatever, then yeah, you're you've got the range covered, the range department covered on a 140 hawk moon. It's got insane stats for handling and stability. Um, it's just the fact that in order to take advantage of that paracausal, like that last shot, you have to save your last shot and you have to be hitting crits as well. And if you reload before you know that last shot comes up you reset your stacks um so yeah it's just not you don't really want to be running around crucible with one bullet in your gun because you get that one bullet and sure maybe you have enough stacks where you one shot an enemy guardian well now you're out of bullets you got to reload if someone comes around the corner in that time when you're reloading because you could have had like nine bullets in your mag already loaded if you had, you know, smartly played out this imaginary duel I'm creating, then you probably won't get aped by the Fallen Winters that's come around the corner, or um, you probably won't lose the next aim duel because you're in the middle of a reload. Uh, that's just my justification for keeping it at A tier and not giving it something like an S tier, uh, just because of how its perk kind of works. And next up we have Ariana's. Ariana's just gonna sit at a C tier for me. It's just an okay gun. Yes, you can it's like a sniper technically. You can but you can't one shot a uh, headshot with it. It will just leave them low. That's really what's holding it back, honestly, is you can't one shot a uh, crit shot with it, which is a good balancing thing because it is incredibly easy to use. I would not like to see this have the attributes of a 90 RPM sniper. Um, the downside is that instead of using a weapon like Fell Winter's Lie in your shotgun, I know I'm using Fell Winter's Lie a lot here, but just say any energy shotgun, really, um, or an energy sniper rifle that could one shot to the head, which Arianas can't do. Would you really prefer to take Ariana's over those types of weapons? And the the answer to that is, I don't know. I don't think so. And for hand cannons, I think that's it. Just uh, viewing the list here. Oh, that's it for hand cannons. So next up, I'm going to be covering grenade launchers and... Uh, their counterpart breach launchers so first up we have fighting lion and fighting lion 
even with the other options you could take in your energy slot, I'm going to have to give it S tier. Because it's a breach launcher that uses primary ammo, and yeah, you have um, Chimera, Thin the Herd, whatever, and it reloads fast. It's, it's a very forgiving breach launcher, especially in 6v6 modes and even in... Um, like tighter gameplay more um 3v3 modes and trials is more punishing towards mistakes and if you're missing if you're using a special breach launcher in 3v3's uh trials and you're missing you only get two shots whereas with fighting line you get like six shots and it uses primary ammo well you're definitely not going to get punished as much for missing your shots However, the thing is that then this takes up the slot of an exotic, and if you're comfortable with losing that exotic weapon slot and giving it up for using something like Fighting Lion. Next up, we have Colony. Colony, just going to give it C tier. Um, reason being is that you only get three ammo for this weapon, and you need two ammo to kill someone. Yes, if you direct shot someone with it, it will kill them because it has spike needs. But the thing is, the whole purpose of this gun is fire and forget. You fire off the three rounds, you forget about it. They find someone, you get one kill or maybe you get two kills because people were standing close enough to each other. Um, sometimes, though, the tracking of the insectoid, the um, spiders, can be a little finicky where, or glitchy. Or not glitchy or finicky. I'm not sure what I want to say here. Where, like... Sometimes they'll like go up the sides of walls, kind of like how cold snaps do when they like mess up their tracking. They'll go up the sides of walls or they go in unexpected paths and not um, deviate towards enemy guardians. And they'll just kind of explode, explode and, you know, be worthless. So C tier for me. Salvation's Grip, F tier. Uh, useless. Uh, absolutely useless. I don't know why you'd be using this in... PvP, it's not going to get you, it's probably not even going to net you one kill like um, col the colony can. So, uh, yeah, no, no for me. Next up, we have the grenade launcher department. Prospector, F tier. Really, it's like, it's the fact that it's full auto is really what messes it up if you could just tap fire like more reliably then yeah but the thing is that like the grenades attached to the ground do burn damage that's its whole thing and then you release it and they all explode excuse me they all explode it's just i i don't know i don't see anyone using it it just seems kind of like a meme gun like salvation's grip to be using you could be using a, a way more reliable heavy, like Black Talon, for example, or Truth, or even Sleeper you could use. Um, this gun just isn't going to do it for you. Next up in the heavy, the grenade launcher, breach launcher department, we've got... Where are they? Yes, here they are. Anarchy, F tier. You need to put two of those little uh, grenade shots down, and then you have to find someone who's stupid enough to walk into that laser. And most of the time, you're going to die before you can even set up a trap, um, especially with the, how the maps are and how the lanes are. If we got Retribution back, that big donut map, then you could probably use Anarchy because... It's a big circle. People are going to bound to run into the trap. However, the thing is, yeah, you can't... Most of the time, you're going to die before you can even benefit from anarchy. Um, next up in the grenade breach launcher department, we have Wither Horde. Wither Horde, actually going to give it S here. It is so incredibly annoying to play against this. I think one of my last VODs where I'm just raging on the stream is just because I'm so sick of playing against this shit. Um, and that's why it's S tier is because the Wither Horde pools last so damn long on the ground. If you walk in it for a second, you pretty much lose your shields. Um, 
if someone direct shots you with it, well, there's nothing you can do because now you're, you're dead. And when you die, you're going to drop a wither pool, um, wither horde pool at your feet. And it's going to start affecting your teammates. And sometimes it's really hard to tell if a wither horde that's on the ground is on your, um, is from your teammates or from the enemies. And you might accidentally walk into it. Um, it's, even though with its slow trajectory speed, if it's just so forgiving with how it is, you just place it down and you just hope someone is in a bad spot or just runs into it and just dies. It's just so stupidly easy to use, and that's what makes it good. S tier. And in terms of GLs, I think that's it. Just want to make sure I don't miss any here. All right, I think I got them all. All right, next up we have fusion rifles, trace rifles, and linear fusion rifles. First up, Queensbreaker F. Uh, doesn't have the aim assistance little bug thing that it has anymore like it did in the heydays of uh, classic Gambit and Gambit Prime. It's just, it's not good. It just feels weird as well. You could use be using so many better heavy exotics in this slot over Queensbreaker. If anything, I'd probably put it like at useless tier. Uh, don't use it. Wave Splitter, F tier. Um, similar to how I rated it for PvE. In order to fully take advantage of Wave Splitter, you have to use another gun to create an orb of light. You pick up that orb of light. Now you can use Wave Splitter. The other thing is that... Um, Trace rifle ammo economy in PvP is absolutely crap because there are, as of this video, Season 13, Patch 3.1.1.2, there are no scav um, mods for trace rifles, which makes trace rifles really bad because you can't get uh, more special for them. It, you just get like small drip feed amounts of uh, special so not worth it and you're probably based off of what i just said with uh wave splitter you can probably guess where i'm gonna place the other trace rifles in the fusion um, category next up in the fusion department we've got bastion bastion s tier um bastion actually not s tier i'd say a tier just because of how fusions work the charge is very easy to predict, um, especially if you know how fusions work. If you know how to predict that charge time, you know you're not going to peak that angle because he's pre-charging that weapon. Bastion, though, absolutely nukes people from range. It nukes uh, Titan shields in like one shot or two shots or something like that, and the third shot will can kill a person. Um, you can yeah one shot burst people with one of the pellet sprays, it bursts three times, one of those pellet sprays will just kill your target. So Bastion, really good weapon. Only thing that's keeping it from being S tier is the fact that with Bastion, you can't um, you can't just shoot it right off the bat. It's not like Fell Winter's Live where you just click and it shoots. With Bastion, it's a fusion, you have to charge it up before you can shoot. And a lot of people don't really know how to pre-charge and that can lead to complications in, in your fights and your duels, especially if you have to charge up your shot to get a next kill. When with Bell Winters, you just click, click, and um, your targets are dead. So, yeah, A tier. Next, we have Arbalest. Arbalest, I know on console with the reticle stickiness, very cancer, especially um, with its jank ass uh, aim assistance. However, it has received aim assistance nerf. I don't really see it ever on PC at all. It's just kind of like a meme weapon, I feel like. Um, gonna Just going to have to give it F tier. It's a cool gun. It's like a sniper rifle without a scope. But it's not like um, No Land Beyond or whatever that V1 sniper was. It's got a charge time, which is kind of suffering with what Bastion's got going on. And then it just, it recently got its AA nerfed, so 
just use a, just use a sniper over this. I don't know why you will. It's a sniper with a charge time and a red dot. If you can use it, use it. But honestly, F tier for me. Next up, we have Cold Heart and Cold Heart and Prometheus. I'm just gonna instantly sick them into D tier here. While they aren't completely as bad as Wave Splitter, I just feel like Wave Splitter is just so <laughs> garbage. These just perform slightly better. Cold Heart because you can just melt targets, and Prometheus just also melt melts targets. And Prometheus, I find it's easier to get headshots with or deal headshot damage with. I don't know. Cold Heart, I just ha struggle sometimes getting headshots or dealing damage with headshots. Um, and then Prometheus is slightly better than Cold Heart, but I'm still keeping it at the D tier because it can auto reload after a kill. And then they both suffer from the whole scav issue, the scav mod issue. Next we have Sleeper. Sleeper as a heavy, kind of a meme gun, gonna give it D tier. It's not completely useless because you can one shot uh, super, uh, people out of their super, kind of like um, our friend Leviathan's Breath. The only issue is you, I think you only get like two shots or one shot now. So um, that's just one shot that you're going to use to kill someone. And if you don't have the catalyst, it's, it's an extremely long charge time. And even with the catalyst, it's a 500 m uh, millisecond charge time. Why use that when you could just use Warcliffe Coil and just nuke everything on the field? Uh, next up in the fusion rifle department, we have Ruinous Effigy. Ruinous Effigy I have used in PvP. Even though you start with 50 ammo instead of the typical 100 ammo that you receive with Cold Heart and Prometheus Lens, and I think Wave Splitter, you only receive 50. However, even though you receive 50 ammo instead of the typical 100, you still do a lot of damage. It just it nukes people, and you can pick up the orb, and the orb can do damage to people. However, the fact that you do a little animation before you can do the right click heavy with the orb kind of holds this back there's a lot of times i'll use this with top tree dawn on um, warlock because i like to use the icarus dash to pick up the orbs and dash at people it's the fact that i can get killed out of the right click which is so annoying because the right click takes forever to, for it to impact into the ground and deal the kill it's that most time most of the time people have time to react and then yeah it's a trace rifle it suffers from the trace rifle uh, economy issue Next fusion we've got is Merciless. Merciless, gonna give it a C tier. It's like Arantel pretty much. It is a high impact frame. Technically it's a high impact frame. Fusion rifle, it will kill reliably one shot. If you get a kill, reload it. You got like a fake kill clip. Um, if you don't hit your target, your charge time decreases, but you still keep the same amount of impact. So you can uh, abuse that against people you aren't hitting all your bolts on. However, fusions um, in this meta with the charge time and all, not not that great unless you know what you're doing. Um, and Merciless doesn't have like any exceptional perks that really elevates its level beyond C tier. Next, we have in the fusion rifle department. Make sure I talked about all of them we have Jotun. Jotun gonna give it an a tier just because you can just one shot people with it and it's just easy to use it's like it's not as good as with horde because sometimes the tracking can be easily avoided just by jumping or sidestepping honestly probably like b tier the reason it's above c tier is that you can just one shot body shot guardian by holding down a button it's not like merciless where you have to hit all your bolts to get the kill with uh with the toaster uh jotun it's just a one and done if your orb hits someone they explode um that's all there there is to it uh next fusion 1000 voices uh c tier for me really mostly because it's just yeah it's you just play ms paint you paint the ground and people explode and die but the thing is like i feel like you're limiting yourself by having to play ms paint instead of just getting a rocket and doing like fire and forget like with war clip coil or and since you only get i'm pretty sure you only get one shot 
that that limits you to either you can get one kill or just try your push your luck and see if you can't get multiple people to cluster close to each other that's also um something you could try but i'm typically not trying that so just it's an okay heavy weapon to be using and in terms of fusion rifles i think the last one here is divinity f tier um yeah, I'm not going to explain why. I mean, I, I feel like I don't have to explain why F tier. It's It makes a crit bubble. Yeah, I guess your teammates can hit that crit bubble. But it's like, it's just like, why? It's just like, why? It's a meme gum, really. It's just, it's just, no. Use this in PvE. Don't use it in PvP. Uh, that's my advice. And in terms of fusion rifles, I believe that is it. Let me just double check here real quick before moving on. Oh, nope, missed one. Telesto. Who could forget Telesto? A tier for me. Um, Not S tier. Just because of, I feel like it's not supremely OP. Because if you know how to play against Telesto, you're not going to fall for how the bolts work. However, it's just still extremely reliable. More so over Jotun because... The bolts can stay on the ground. People can run over the bolts and explode into a million pieces off of the bolts. You can spray the bolts on certain angles to prevent people from peeking those angles. You can spray the bolts on heavy to prevent people from picking up heavy. Um, it one shots reliably. It's got a fast charge time. It's pretty stable. It's easy to use. A tier. And I think that was the last fusion. Hopefully I got them all this time. Yep, I believe that is it. So next we have Pulse Rifles. Vigwing, S tier. Um, I don't know how effective Vigwing would be in uh, Trials or in uh, Comp 3v3 modes. Pretty good in 6v6 quick play modes uh, just because Harsh Truth pretty much procs every time your teammates die. So you get your health regen going every time someone dies it doesn't even matter where they're dying on the map it pretty much procs it's extremely an extremely forgiving weapon to be using you can two burst to the head or you could just like body shot people concerning how fast this pulse rifle shoots um it's just a good all-around pulse rifle and especially with the catalyst you get full auto so if you like full auto like me where you don't have to let go of the trigger it just it beams people Next up in the Pulse Rifle department, we have Graviton Lance. I actually used this today. I'm going to give it the C tier. It can three tap people, but it's like a scout, a very limiting scout. Um, it's just an okay gun. It's not bad, but it's not good. It's a mix between a scout and a Pulse Rifle, and that's really the issue that's keeping it from being higher. I would really like to see if they could make this shoot faster if it could shoot faster i think it would be a lot better but the fact that it can't shoot faster and as slow as it is for a pulse rifle it's not very good and again it's an energy slot exotic you're competing with other energy slots um weapons things like bottom dollar fell winter's lie uh, fighting lion you're competing with that you're competing with something like telesto something like Jotun. it's just would you prefer to use Telesto, which is more reliable in its killing than Graviton Lance. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, Pulse Rifles, we've got... No time to explain. Instant S here for me. This gun is... If anything, it's above Vidgewing. I think Vidgewing is more like A tier. And um, No Time to Explain is S tier. No Time to Explain definitely would take this over Vidgewing. It's very a very even more so than vigwing a very forgiving weapon to be using it's two bursts to the head two crit bursts to the head will kill your target when you hit crits you get time rewind stacks when you hit i think 10 stacks of time rewind you get the little ghost thing that pops out and shoots bullets out of it and this thing is fucking insane the the ghost uh, orb thing you get that shoots out no time to explain bursts out of it 
can see enemies before you even see them. And its range on the ghost itself is like, I keep calling it a ghost. It's not a ghost, but that's the, that's what it feels like whenever you summon your ghost um, up. It kind of appears in that same area. When this ghost comes up, it beams people from so far away. It is just such a good weapon. It's all its stats are incredibly good. And the fact that I call it, it's like a dad rifle. It's a replacement for Blast Furnace if you play back in uh, Season of the Forge when Blast Furnace was just destroying everyone. This is like the Blast Furnace on steroids. It's just, it's so good and so easy to use. And it can definitely compete with any of these other S tier kinetics like Sturm. And even it can compete with just the legendary 120 hand cannons. It's definitely a gun I recommend using in pvp uh next pulse rifle i believe is bad juju bad juju uh gonna have to give it in the current meta i'm gonna have to give it d tier it's not completely useless it's got full auto you can generate super off of it but that's all it's really got going for it. its range is absolutely abysmal its range is really what's keeping it from being a top tier if it had slightly better range then i think i could move it up to maybe like c tier b tier would be pushing it but right now d tier i've used it recently i really do not like where it sits at especially when things like no time to explain or Vigwing wing exist um uh, next pulse which i believe is the last pulse rifle is outbreak outbreak f um it just doesn't kill fast enough and the perks it has i feel like doesn't really benefit you unless you're playing on console and you need that extra high stability um, since it shoots like a laser i just really i don't enjoy using this right now especially in the current meta um, bad juju has a little bit more going for it than outbreak perfected does uh it's just that's a no for me f tier and for pulses double checking looks like that is it next up we have swords f tier world line uh it's just a sword it's just a sword um nothing really going on for it uh f tier black talon that's an s tier for me I love using Black Talon in PvP. You get two shots out of it. The right clicks are like mini Dawn Blades that track towards people. Really good. Um, it's a free. It's a free two kills at minimum. More if you have if you manage to hit people who are standing next to each other, you can collapse them and um, get big, big kills. I've killed three people off of a control point with one Black Talon swipe before, so it's a very good. Uh, heavy weapon especially since you can three peek with it um with how cancer three peeking is and even with the three peeking changes uh going into i think season 15 or whatever whenever bungie said they were going to uh, get on that even when you pick up heavy you're still going to be able to three peek with the sword since you have heavy that was the change they wanted to make um just being able to see your opponents with your heavy um before they can see you just makes it a lot easier to get kills with this weapon and i believe the last sword is lament f tier just like world line it's just a sword uh in pve it really shines it really benefits from its perks but in pvp you need something more than just a sword you need something like black talon and black talon's got those nice little sword projectiles whereas this does it's just a sword it's a chainsaw sword but who cares if you get health back on a sword kill no one's gonna let you proc the chain um the chainsaw and get up close enough to for you to do strikes against them because one strike is just gonna kill them anyways so you're not gonna get any banshee uh, stacks of banshee's whale so uh f tier and for swords that is it next up we have auto rifles Kerberos, Cerberus plus one, however you want to say it, was using this today. It's pretty fun to use. However, um, from the VOD, it kills extremely slowly. I tried saving Valiant from getting killed, and I couldn't do it because Cerberus could not kill fast enough. It 
literally as i was shooting the dude who was killing valiant valiant gets killed by that dude and then i'm finally able to finish up the kill um it's really just it's a meme gun honestly it's um however it is slightly better than symmetry and skyburners by the fact that i can just get kills more reliably with it and just a little bit you know it's like a shotgun you can get in people's face the catalyst really does not do anything for it at all it's just kind of like a meme gun yeah really d tier seems too deserving f tier really but it's like if there was an f plus this is your gun or it's like d minus really but putting it in d tier with all these other weapons just seems not um like sunshot is definitely better than Kerberos. Same with Malfeasance. Uh definitely better than it. Next up we have Sweet Business. And Sweet Business in the right hands, I think can do work. It's pretty annoying. Definitely not gonna be using this in trials, 3v3 modes. Pretty cancer in 6v6 modes though. Gonna have to give it a B tier. Not C tier, mostly because when you're spinning up and you're just spraying around corners, it becomes very difficult to fight against. Because as soon as you're like spraying up and you're ma at max fire rate and someone peeks around the corner, well, since you're at max fire rate, you're just going to beam them to death and there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it. Um, pretty good gun. It's just that uh, auto rifles can't really compete sometimes with 120s. And especially since you have to charge it up, the charging factor, it kind of limits you. Also, when you're charging and you're shooting you it leaves your flank quite vulnerable from behind so then you'll have to stop shooting and swivel around so honestly probably c tier actually so yeah sweet business c tier uh tommy's matchbook tried using it today i just could not get kills with it at all i just gave up after using it for a little bit it just you have to hip fire it to really benefit from it. Um, I just don't. It just doesn't feel good F tier. And it just doesn't do work either. Hard light. I just. Hard light still probably just C tier. Middle of the pack. It's not as good as it once was back in the 600 uh, auto meta. And back when it's ricochet was insanely good. Um, you could just like destroy people with its ricochet rounds not as good as it once was um still pretty decent uh it hits from pretty far away however again with an energy weapon like this you have to think of all the weapons that it has to compete with in the energy slot and you really have to ask yourself are those weapons can this gun compete with those weapons and the answer is most likely no Next, we have Suro, Surf's Regime. Going to have to give it a B tier. Spinning up is really only the only perk of it that you're going to be using. You're not going to be using dual receiver. Shoots too slow. Spinning up is where, it's, where the money's at. Um, you can get your health back potentially off of a kill. Um, it's just a reliable gun. It's more reliable, I'd say, than using any weapon from a C tier. But it's just not as deadly or as potent as something from an a or s tier area maybe it can compete with mida i feel like giving mida here um mida probably is like b tier honestly i'm just gonna drop it down there b tier uh, but yeah that's where i stand currently i'm gonna keep mida at the a tier i'm just gonna commit to that but it might as probably like a minus if anything Come on, go back there. There we go. And then service B tier. Uh, next auto rifle is Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, still pretty good. Gonna give it the B tier treatment, same as Suros. Yeah, it doesn't heal you, but being able to get your melee back, um, and at least in quick play, 6v6 modes is pretty useful. Um, don't know how useful Monte Carlo would be in comp. I haven't really seen a lot of people use it in comp or trials trials it's just not uh, trials is whatever the top meta is going to be and this is not top meta 
and hence why it's at B tier. Um, even with a horde, you're not going to see it in trials, um, but you would see like this in trials, this in trials, maybe this in trials, maybe this in trials. But with a horde, it's just it's good in it. It's good in six v six. That's why it deserves a spot. Monte Carlo. Getting your melee back is pretty useful. Instantly puts it above C tier. There's some builds you can do as a Titan where you could do like a four shoulder charge kill super um, using Monte Carlo. So uh, it's pretty good in the fact that you can get an ability back just by getting kills with this weapon. And then for auto rifles, I think that's it. Let me just check here real quick. Yep, that's it. Next up, we have rocket launchers. Uh, first up, we have truth. Truth, just gonna be C tier. Um, it's you lock onto a target, fire and forget. It gets it's more than likely to get the kill. Uh, it just is a good rocket. However, there's probably legendary rockets you could use that are better than truth. So honestly, I feel like C tier is a little bit too much. It's more like D tier. Um, next up, Deathbringer. Deathbringer, a little bit better than Truth, I would say, just because the fact that it's like a mini Nova Bomb where you can shoot it up into the air, it explodes, it's it's silent. Uh, not a lot of people catch on to the fact that a Deathbringer has been used the orbs come down and they kill a bunch of people, especially if those people are clustered together. Whereas Truth, is, it locks onto one target, it hits one target. Deathbringer can hit multiple targets. However, Deathbringer, the orbs are quite slow, so it can be a little unreliable and, um, because of that. And then, yeah, it's just it, it's a slightly better than average rocket launcher, but it's, I don't know. Uh, it depends how you use it, how do you, you utilize it, um, where you can get the most out of it. And then Warcliffe Coil, A tier for me. This thing, it just nukes supers, uh, easy to use. The little uh, rockets can sometimes, uh, you can get lucky and they'll just track at insane distances, at insane angles. I have shot a person with Warcliffe Coil and the rockets went and did, not, did a 90 degree turn and killed a guy behind a wall. So uh, yeah, Warcliffe Coil is pretty good. Uh, however, wouldn't rate it as S tier because I do believe Black Talon is slightly stronger than Warcliffe Coil. Uh, next up, we have Eyes of Tomorrow. Eyes of Tomorrow gonna give it c tier because it's a slightly better truth and the fact that with even with one ammo you can lock onto more targets and you get multiple rockets however i the consistency of me hitting people with the rockets is rather low because a lot of maps are enclosed and in tight spaces eyes of tomorrow really benefits from open area maps from larger spaces whereas warcliff coil you don't have to lock on you just ass blast someone with the warcliff coil and it just absolutely kills them um yeah that's where it sits for me and then last but not least we have two-tailed fox gonna have to give it d tier it's like it's like honestly f tier really it's like it's a worse truth really it's like here's the baby eyes of tomorrow then here's the like the the little brother of eyes of tomorrow and then here you've got eyes of tomorrow and then this is like the souped up i don't know like here's i mean really what i should be saying is warcliff warcliff your top dog warcliff's little brother uh, uh war warcliff's uh second <laughs> little brother and warcliff's little little tiny baby is uh too tailed down here it's just that warcliff does the job better than all of these tracking rockets it's just here are the steps up along the way uh last but not least is nothing so we have sidearms next devil's rune use this today gonna give it c tier because the range on the laser is pretty insane when you charge up the laser however it's um sidearms on pc not really meta at all not really good 
um it's just an average gun really the laser is really fun to use so yeah c tier uh rat king also gonna give it c tier even though uh not as meta uh, uh, really i really should this is really d tier and this is really d tier mostly because even though this is full auto and like this has a laser it's like sidearms for pc not very good um just not very strong at all um just because of how the meta differs from pc to console on console sidearms are a lot better because of the reticle stickiness however pc mouse and keeper we do not get the reticle stickiness so it's getting a lower tier for me d tier uh yes you can get your health regen on a kill when you have the catalyst and when you reload you after a kill you go invis but why would you use Rat King when you can use Sturm, when you could use Ace, when you can use Dead Man's Hail? It's just, it's not very good uh, D tier. Traveler's Chosen, gonna give it the C tier just because of how ability spammy Destiny 2 is currently. The fact that Traveler's Chosen can give you back your abilities uh, makes it a pretty okay gun to use. However, it's not something I'm gonna be using over something like Crimson or Monte Carlo or Jotun or Sturm, or Ace. Obviously, you can see where I'm going here. It's a C tier. And next up, we've got uh, Machine Guns. Air Parent. Pretty deadly if someone isn't using Arc. D tier. That's all really got the expl explanation for. If someone isn't using an Arc Energy, you're completely fine. If, um, uh, if someone is using an Arc Energy, you're fucked. You're dead. Uh, you're gonna die. It's uh, its shield is very strong against people who are trying to kill you and don't have arc weapons. But it's just, I don't know. It's slow, really. It's just slow. It's not good. There are better options to be using in your heavy slot, and more so being legendary options as well. Next up, we have Thunderlord. Thunderlord. A good C tier. I think if you can't manage to get yourself a good heavy um, legendary or a like a rocket launcher or another machine gun, Thunderlord definitely is something that can fulfill that role. Uh, back in the day, Season of the Forge, I used Thunderlord before I got my hands on a well rolled uh, hammerhead, and then I used hammerhead until hammerhead got sunset. Um, and I think the last um heavy or last machine gun is um xenophage c tier for me yeah you can kill people fast but it's just again better options exist um i feel like actually giving it c tier is almost a little bit too much it's probably like c minus to me because i just feel like thunderlord does it well, I don't know. You could argue Xenophage does it faster because you can kill faster with Xenophage. But the thing is, like, if you miss with Xenophage, you miss that splash, then, like, you're fucked. Uh, but, yeah, you can't kill people technically behind corners with Xeno. So Xeno can be good in that, uh, that regard. But it's just... I don't see a lot of people using Xeno. I personally don't use Xeno in PvP. Maybe in Gambit, for the that PvP aspect of invading... Xenophage is definitely a top dog killer, but for how I'm ranking for Crucible, you're not going to see a lot of Xenophage. It's just an okay gun um, to be using, and it's an okay heavy. It, it gets kills, but it's not something you're going to be seeing a lot of. Next up, we have our shotguns. So shotguns, chaperone, S tier. Um, just a really good shotgun. Slug shotgun, you can kill from up to 14 meters away if you have roadborne proct it's just extremely reliable it's easy to use once you get used to how slugs work um, it pairs well with a lot of the energy um, primaries in this game like bottom dollar or a palindrome i've said palindrome kind of feels like a not forgotten you pair your chaperone with the palindrome, you've recreated the old meta of chaperone and not forgotten. So it's it's still a damn good weapon, even with how crazy um, Fell Winters is and Astral Horizon is. Chaperone can still compete. 
Next shotgun we got is Lord of Wolves. Lord of Wolves, give it C tier. If you know how Lord of Wolves works and you can manage its weird ammo economy, it can definitely still work. However, if really if you don't understand how that how to work it, how to work Lord of Wolves, then it's really sitting at D tier. Um, you have to play very aggressively and you have to play up in people's faces and you have to use a lot of ammo to get a kill. Whereas Felwinders can get that kill in a click. So really, it's up to you if you want to use uh, Lord of Wolves or not. Again, it's like a meme gun. Uh, tractor Cannon. Tractor Cannon. I give it a B tier. Just f for the fact that you can keep it to suppress people. Um, I'm not entirely sure how much ammo you get with Tractor now. I don't know if it's... Um, I, th I think you get three shots with it. I'm not sure um how many shots you get with tractor but with tractor tractor suppresses targets so and will pretty much just kill them up close so if someone's in their super you can tractor them bring them out of their super and it will pretty much just kill them um right there and then so uh it's got that going for it but you know warcliff fire and forget you don't have to play um safely like with tractor cannon you have to get up close to that super so that's your problem with it. With Warcliffe Coil, you don't. You just fire it in their face and then you run off. So that's what Tractor is kind of losing out to. Next up is the Fourth Horseman, uh, F tier. You have to get like two shots pretty much to get a kill with this thing. So yeah, uh, no, don't use it. Oh, and I of course I missed it, is Duality. Duality... I give an A tier. It's just, it's the budget version of Chaperone. It can't kill as far, even with the Catalyst, but it's cool in the fact that if you hip fire it, it's like a shotgun, a pellet shotgun, and if you ADS, it's like a Chaperone, like a slug. Um, if you can get used to something like that, then it's a def definitely a very good energy thing to have in that slot. It's just... It can be a little confusing to use. Um, really, I personally don't use it. Don't see a lot of people using it. So it's, but it definitely has its place in the A tier um, for me. And for shotguns, that is it. So, oh no, we have accuracy here. How could I forget? Yeah, F tier. Um, it's like the crappy version of Tractor Cannon, except it doesn't suppress, it will just kill. But it requires you to get into people's faces first. Yes, if you pick up heavy ammo, it has that extended radar. But it's just like... It's just like, no, you're not going to be like trying this 300 IQ move where you pick up Acrius and you use the extended radar to help you get kills. It's just like, that's such a far-fetched tactic. Um an idea or like move to be using in 6v6 modes or in trials or in a 3v3 mode it's just not it's not something you're gonna bank on using and now finally we can move on to sniper rifles borealis gonna give it a c tier it's if you don't have a good sniper rifle i guess borealis can put the bill it's just a overall reliable weapon it's got good um stats in each of its um each of the columns, the rows, whatever, a good handling, good stability. Um, and it has, it pretty much is what, if you've watched the cool guy video on Borealis, it's pretty much, it's got the stats of a 90 RPM sniper rifle, but it's a 72 RP, RPM sniper rifle. So if you have any like buffs, um, damage buffs applied to you, you can one shot body shot guardians. Um, and yeah, it's it's just a reliable gun. Darcy, F tier. Unless you're trying to hit like clips or something with Darcy. Yeah, uh, not my pick. Same with Whisper, unless you're trying to hit clips with it. Not very good. Uh, Izanagi's, I'm just going to give B tier. Uh, it's slightly above C tier, being that if you proc Hone Edge with four stacks, you can... Um, the four stacks i think in the pve i said like six stacks six stacks is technically what you get when you have the catalyst 
when you proc the hone edge, yeah, you can body shot people, but it's like, you I don't know. It, the sights of Izanagi's is a little wonky. I don't really like it all too much. I just feel like there are better uh, sniper rifles available in your other slots. Um, instead of using Izanagi's, it's just B tier for me. And then the last sniper rifle we have is um, Cloud Strike. Cloud Strike. Gonna give it A tier. Uh, above Izanagi's just because of it's just a little bit easier to use. It's got pretty good stats, high handling, um, which is good for you know bringing out Cloud Strike and zooming in fast with Cloud Strike. The one thing I really don't like about Cloud Strike is when you get hit while you're zoomed in, it flinches like a motherfucker. It just really takes you off of people's bodies or heads if you get hit once. It's just that's really what's keeping it for from me for being higher for being like S here or something like that. However, it's very good for clearing people off of uh, cat points, especially you get the one headshot, you create the lightning storm effect, and it just nukes everyone around them. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be using this in trials. I don't know. Maybe you might find some benefit in trials if you can get people stacked up close to each other. It is a reliable sniper rifle, um, just because all of its stats are pretty good. It's just um, not a not a favorite of mine, but a tier definitely. Risk runner. For submachine guns, our final column, Risk Runner, uh, a D tier. Mostly because it's just, you need to ha be playing against people who are using arc weapons for it to proc its perk, or you have to waste your grenade on yourself to proc its perk. It's just not, not good in that sense. But if you have its perk proc, um, art conduction then it's pretty good but like you're, you're not gonna the odds that you're gonna have that perk proc are very low and the odds that you're gonna want to waste your nade to proc its perk is also very low unless you have if you're running a hundred discipline um setup i just don't see it happening and then terrible c tier for me it's like the crappy recluse but when you have ravenous beast procced if you're able to stay alive long enough to proc it this thing absolutely melts enemy players it's just a very good gun however that being said i would put huckleberry above teraba just on the fact that with teraba you have to use teraba all the time in order to get your ravenous beast to get to its full meter and then you proc ravenous beast if you swap off a teraba it gets rid of the ravenous beast stacks um not not that great of a design but i understand why it's like that because of how recluse work um huckleberry it's got the pre-nerf uh rampage stacks so yeah it's slightly better than c because of that but it's not any higher than a B tier. And yep, that pretty much concludes this video slash this stream for my exotic Destiny 2 PvP tier list. Um, yeah, and if you like this type of content, for the people who aren't watching this, consider liking the video and subscribing. And yep, that's going to be it for me tonight.